Thank you. Hi, everyone. Very glad to be uh, here uh, this year again, because last year I was already honored to be invited to present one of my projects, uh, lighting design, urban lighting design I did in Vietnam. So this year I would like to be more like general in terms of uh, approach regarding urban lighting and focusing on the nightscape. So this morning we had already a lot of uh, presentation from Seoul uh, 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 projects uh, focusing on the nightscape, which is very interesting to me because I'm trying also to uh, bring this term a bit more uh, worldwide, I would say, or at least in terms of uh, project to my clients and the people I'm talking with, a different approach. So what is nightscape? M myself, I'm born and I'm spent my childhood in France in the countryside, so I was used to enjoy the starry night, the stargazing, and enjoy also the meteor hunting during the summertime when the sky is very clear. <clears throat> then I moved to Asia, I moved to big cities like Paris. I'm now for 10 years in Southeast Asia, in Bangkok, in Ho Chi Minh City. Very fun cities, full of light, but of course, I don't have any chance to enjoy the stars anymore. So the nightscape is a lot about the sky, the night sky. So this image is a dream. Maybe one day we can enjoy also the stars from the heart of our cities. So nightscape, it's the urban landscape by night, of course. Urban landscape is planned for daytime mostly. This is a view from Bangkok suburb. A lot of regulation for the building, infrastructure, transportation. But what about the nightscape? In this image, I would like you to imagine what could be the nightscape, actually. <clears throat> so this is a timeless, timeless video revealing the nightscape a bit randomly, because in fact, who planned this uh, nightscape? Nobody really specifically. This nightscape is a result of the transportation, traffic lighting, advertising, very bright, not so much from the building, actually. But it gives an image, a nighttime image of the city, the nightscape image. Because the nightscape for urban lighting is quite tricky to organize. This is a view from Seoul. And from this point of view, we have actually many types of light sources from buildings, from public uh, areas, from traffic lighting for different purposes, also from the facade, signage, from public and private sectors. So it's very tricky and complicated to really um, manage the full um, nightscape vision of a city. Also the industry, and then the sky. So the sky is really the background of the nightscape uh, vision of a city. This is four examples in, uh, in Asia. So the daytime view to nighttime. So very interesting also to notice that the nightscape gives a very different images for each type of situation. Also, we are facing different cities, different scales of um, cities and different level of developments. And it gives also different feelings and identity from purely functional, maybe the first level of uh, development of light, urban lighting, to very monumental, very iconic, very linked to the tourism industry also. On the top right, this is Ho Chi Minh City that I know very well. It's a very funny city, full of lights, but the lighting is not really a plan in advance. It's more the result of uh, individual and private uh, initiatives. And this, uh, this one in, in South Korea is more about the socialization of light, how to place maybe not so much uh, illumination, but to think first of all about the community and how it can gather people. Because urban lighting design at its best involved all these different type of uh, expertise and analysis. And also many different type of experts linked to all these uh, different expertise, which is quite tricky and complicated to gather, organize, and even in terms of um, organization and financement to, to really plan it correctly. 
So depending the situation, you have maybe sometimes few of this expertise that is are really um, involved in the urban lighting. For example, in Vietnam, we have more like a direct connection between the cities and the manufacturers, so not so much other people involved, even lighting designer, designers are not much involved in urban lighting in Vietnam. So, uh, all my observation in this uh, nightscape approach, coming also from different conferences, different meetings, different project situations I've been through, and in terms of global concern, what I can say, and I think everybody would be agree, is the light pollution. So this topic about light pollution is in every uh, discussion today, uh, from different uh, sides, from the cities, the lighting designers, the manufacturers. Light pollution is one word, but it's involved a lot of impact for human, for the environment, the wildlife, and the, of course the night sky vision. So it's a lot of different uh, impact that actually links more or less together and are really uh, increasing and drastically. While lighting is actually one of the most easiest polluant to eradicate compared to chemical, gas or liquid, just have to turn it off. But why we don't do that? Because we have, of, of course, much more concern than that, than that about lighting. First of all, the safety. So this is also the first uh, comment and first um, concerns that cities have about lighting. It's about safety, security, the feelings, but also the, the real uh, security issues for circulations, for example. Second is the social aspect of light. Of course, light is a very uh, important key of city developments. It brings people, people together, it creates social uh, connections. And the third one is the economy. Of course, lighting is attractive, is also engage people to join certain areas, very important for the um, commercial activity, tourism. It's also, in terms of economy, a cost for a city. And this, there is here, of course, some uh, aspect to balance between investment and return of investment. So now we have also some global response to these concerns today. And coming from different sources about sustainability and health protection, we have now in the media and press release a lot of uh, projects like local initiatives from different cities all over the world trying to uh, solve the problem of uh, light pollution, saving energy. We have also association and guidelines. So of course, Lucy is part of it. Dark Sky Association is doing also a great job for almost 30 years already. And we have a regulation uh, and labels from, of course, country to country is very different, but things are evolving in this aspect. And we have the technological uh, response. Now we have a lot of new products using the term human-centric, human so this is about the circadian rhythm here. We have also the dark sky friendly luminaires for cities. Uh, I can see even recently like um, many uh, manufacturers and brands are thinking about how they can evolve their technology to, to be more like dark sky friendly. And we have also all the new technology about control and energy. But from this um, concern and response, there is also contradictions. Because light pollution, the last eight years, actually increase. From Dark Sky Association, we had a meeting in Montpellier with Lucy a few months ago. Every eight years, light pollution is doubling on the planet. So this is the first contradiction. Second contradictions, we will we are just uh, have a presentation about the GLOW Festival, the blooming of light festival everywhere on the planet. It's a contradiction, but a positive contradiction means people are attracted by light. Light is bringing fun, bringing life, bringing enjoyment, it's attracting people, so it needs, I mean, it's meaning that we need light to enjoy our life during the night time. There is also the contradiction that many lighting festivals are also very 
concern about the sustainability. So there is here some contradiction about we need to light, but also be careful about the pollution, the energy. So there is a lot of things to balance here. Another contradiction is the risk of standardization. So with regulations, with a technological response, the problem is also we can reach this level of like too much standardization, opposite to the light festival, we lose our culture of light. And the last contradiction is for us, lighting designer, actually in my practice as lighting designer, people are calling lighting designer, of course, to think the light, so to put light. And most of the time we have this contradiction that we are talking about light pollution, we are explaining that we want to go darker. And on the other hand, people are hiring us to bring lights. So this is a contradiction. Lighting design to fix darkness is, seems a bit weird. So from this um, observation and through my practice, after 10 years uh, practicing uh, lighting design in Southeast Asia, I introduced a new term in my, to my clients, a nightscape design. So we don't start from the light, we start from the night. And in this um, new approach of the lighting design, nightscape design, I try to organize the challenges and answers in four pillars. The first one is the culture of light. We are, people have a lack of knowledge about lighting in general. I'm talking even about the personal light. So we have unequal uh, understanding and um, we have a lack of, um, of uh, information and access to some products to to, to be like really aware about how light is, artificial light is actually um, impacting our health. So the nightscape approach is about this. It's also about to educate uh, citizens, uh, educate the cities, professionals, organizing uh, conferences, events, workshops. This is some workshop we did a few months ago in Bangkok with the university and uh, the governor of Bangkok came even to, to have a look at it. Uh, I did also some um, expedition by night with some uh, uh, cities like um, uh, the section about the light lighting, urban lighting. We, we, they were experimenting just the natural night sky for the first time in their life, so very interesting. Second pillar is the cosmos reconnection. The night time is more or less half part of our life and the other side of the world. But we are missing the connection to our cosmos now and our universe. So the um, nightscape design is also about how we can reconnect with our uh, universe and our cosmos, the moon cycle. In terms of design, we are thinking about, for example, combining lighting control on moon cycles. We have a deep understanding about human night vision that we are not using anymore, but we should re-educate also citizens to use it. We have also some uh, collaboration with astronomers and scientists to really understand deeply and bring a fresh look about light pollution and how we can balance light in the city and connection to the cosmos. The third pillar is the fusion of art in and engineering. Urban lighting today is mostly a technical layer on the urban planning, while the art, artistic approach of lighting is more like centralized on some areas or temporary, like festivals. So the nightscape design, we try also to blur the limit between function and art and combine both together, bringing more like local solution and connect to local culture. So this is an idea that we could have very specific luminaires bringing also the functional illumination for the city, but also be inspiring and connected to the citizen. The last pillar for the nightscape design that we were working on is the future of light. So as lighting designer, we have also a position, good position to analyze the different uh, feedback from the users, the manufacturers, and it's important to have a prospective thinking, means when we are designing 
uh, lighting for the cities, we should also think about the future evolution of light. We should also introduce some new knowledge and try to imagine really, maybe sometime a bit far away, what could be the next generation of lighting or how the light could be integrated in our urban design. For example, this image on the uh, lower uh, right side, there is no more pole light or uh, street lighting. The lights come from the building. It's like integrated in the architecture. We are also thinking about why not we have some night vision systems to avoid any traffic light on highway or far from the cities. The portable lamp, we have also this experimentation about uh, bioenergy uh, to power a portable lamp. So this is a lot of research that we are also conducting right now with different manufacturers and some projects we are working on. So the um, Nightscape approach, is it, is it a future practice? So this is my question today, and this is why also it's very uh, important for me to introduce this, um, this uh, idea to, to you today, to have also your feedback, because this is um, maybe a, a way for, for a Nightscape designer to be more involved in project in, uh, in Asia or all over the world, bringing different type of team uh, expertise with different experts and trying to adapt also to different situations in the world. So the nightscape design should be integrated in the urban design, like urban design is really may maybe focused on the daytime, but thinking about the urban design by nighttime is also a very important aspect today. And also uh, to think, of course, long, long term and uh, short term and long term strategy. So this is some examples, some projects we are um, designing. Uh, some are already installed, by the way, but this is some project in uh, Vietnam. Those ones mostly. So all these projects, for example, we have designed the, the luminaires, and we collaborate with the manufacturers to come up with a specific uh, bespoke uh, uh, systems. And we are also involved in some uh, workshop with the community, some project. For example, this one is in Hanoi. We organize a workshop with the citizens to explain this nightscape uh, approach. Of course, it was very interesting because people have no idea about uh, lighting much, uh, didn't know, so it was a lot of new things for them, new uh, vocabulary and new uh, concept, but very interesting. We have also this uh, project done uh, in, uh, I present this project in detail last year here in Hanoi. So this is a, a, a real project, pilot project where we eliminate all the pole light, for example, here, and the lighting is only downwards here to avoid the, the spray uh, up light and that create light pollution in the center of Hanoi. This one is a project where we, uh, also in Vietnam, where we really focus on the historical narrative to think the lighting in a very natural environment. So very, very low uh, illumination here. And still we have some moments, some temporary uh, area where we create something more like colorful, uh, dynamic. But the purpose of this, uh, this place here is to enjoy the stargazing. So we are even targeting the dark cell label for this project. So thanks to the dark sky because it helps us a lot. And the last one is uh, just to show a bit more like technical, how we work also with uh, manufacturers. So we design this kind of uh, luminaires to illuminate the landscape and the plaza. And here we combine here the knowledge about the lighting and we create uh, color from the white light through the prism. So this is natural color of light here that we project all over the place. And this is challenging, but this is this kind of things that I think would be interesting to develop more. Partnership with also manufacturers, lighting designers and cities to create like very specific luminaires to combine uh, art and function. I think I'm good? Yes, thank you.